Ragdoll Bubble with Jade Raymond, the producer of Assassin's Creed. I'm really pleased to meet you, Jade. Very nice to meet you too. So, um, this is my first chance to really ask you a bit about Assassin's Creed. Can you give me a general overall view for people who who had, you know, a bag over their head for the last few months? What is Assassin's Creed about? So, Assassin's Creed, as the title implies lets you play as a master assassin. Now the assassins are a clan of warriors that came to be during the Third Crusade. They actually existed. Um, this is a brand new franchise by Ubisoft Montreal Studio and we were really inspired by the historical events of the Third Crusade and the existence of these um, assassins that not many people know much about. Uh, so you play Altair and your mission is to track down and assassinate nine key guys, at least that's what you're told, um, nine key guys who are really at the root of the Third Crusade, evil, evil men who are profiting and uh, making the population suffer, arms dealers, uh, slave traders, people who are bringing over troops and selling weapons uh, from Europe, all kinds of people on all sides of the fence. And as you go about tracking these guys down and getting rid of them, uh, you notice that something else is going on. Uh, they're somehow connected and there's a little bit more of the story and cover. That has implications actually all the way to today. So yesterday I got a chance to see a couple of new levels. Can you tell me a bit about those? So, so far, what we've seen, what we've shown people is a demo map that we created for E3 last year, which is a small portion of Acre. Um, what we showed in the video is the full expanse of the three cities. Each one is 15 times larger than what we showed at E3 last time. So huge, the actual size of those cities. Um, and we, ha we showed a bit of Jerusalem for the first time, a bit of Damascus for the first time, and also the kingdom and some of the horse, uh, well, combat on horse, we gave a little preview. Yeah, I mean, it looked really cool. One of the things we've seen was some fighting on rooftops. And I mean, I know that the, the environments are very interactive. How are we getting up here? What, what's all this fighting going on up in these upper levels? <laughs> so usually there's not that much going on on the rooftops, as one would expect. So you may want to stay on the ground if you want to blend in the crowd. To avoid the crowd, you may want to go to the rooftops. But also during escape, it's a way to be sure that you're not going to have a ton of people in your way and merchant stands and people in lineups. So Altier can use his great like free running skills and get up there. The only problem is, is that the AI actually can follow you. They can't do everything you can do, but they will find a way around. They're smart enough to say, okay, around the corner, I know there's a ladder, I'm going to climb up there. And so it's not really an occasion to just chill out when you get on the rooftops. The yeah. pressure is still on. And what will happen is like they, they will probably eventually catch up to you unless you're really on a mission and darting through the um, rooftops. And you'll get these really cool fights where you get an opportunity to like use that environment so you can throw people off and you know, not waste a throwing knife on them. They'll just die when they hit the ground. And it's actually pretty spectacular. You, we have, like, all the physics modeled on the rag dolls there. So depending on the way you throw them or which direction you pitch them, you'll see, like, a different kind of fall. Um, pretty <laughs> 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 The That's big so yellow. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've always I've had a bit of a fascination about this... Um, the knife that, that we have between these fingers here. So this finger's cut off, is this correct? Now, is, do all assassins do this? Is this, is this a historically accurate thing? Well, the assassins are historically accurate, mm. but we did add a couple of things for gameplay reasons just that we thought were cool. And uh, to us, like, you know, being an assassin, you want an inconspicuous weapon. You want something that's not going to draw too much attention to yourself. So we invented this ritual that's the initiation ritual for the assassins, mm -hmm. which involves them cutting off a finger, the sacrifice you're willing to make, yeah. and uh, then they install a hidden blade. And that hidden blade really becomes your weapon of choice, especially if you have to perform an assassination in a crowded area or you don't want to be seen or do something mm -hmm. a little bit more stealthy. Now you're saying you, you invented this ritual. Don't you think really that you should partake in this ritual and, and get rid of the finger? I think that that would show real dedication to the game personally. I agree. Um, I've been asked maybe to put on the Altair costume. That's another thing mm. that I'm not willing to do. Oh, come on! <laughs> I have my limits, you know? But um, yeah, I'll, I'll consider it. <laughs> I think you should. Yeah. I think if you're really serious <laughs> about your career, this is the way to go. So your favorite move 
that we know of so far is the leap of faith. Can you describe that for me? Yeah, so the leap of faith is actually inspired by something that Marco Polo wrote about in his book. So Marco Polo, um, in The Adventures of Marco Polo, which is like his memoirs, uh, came upon the assassins and he wrote about them. And he talked about this ceremony where the assassins uh, fearlessly jumped to their death out of, uh, from a super, super high place on command. And we kind of reinvented that. We said they didn't really jump to their death. It was all a manipulation technique, that really they had some trick uh, ground at the bottom and that really they were all okay. And it was really to intimidate everyone, to say, look at the power. These guys will do anything. They're not scared of death. So we made our own twist on this uh, thing that Marco Polo talked about. And it also has gameplay benefits because... Um, you can climb anything, you can go anywhere, you're often going to have people chasing you down, you're often going to be hunting. What better way to get away from people than climb up to an impossible height where no one can reach you and then do this incredible jump where obviously everyone assumes you're dead. Yeah. And meanwhile, you land safely below in a bale of hay. <laughs> Fabulous. That yeah. sounds excellent. I might do that later. I, I don't recommend you try it at home. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Can you tell me in a bit more detail about the assassin's fighting moves that he has? Um, well, he has four main weapons. So one we already talked about, which is the hidden blade. Um, you also have a sword, which people have seen a lot. Um, there's also, of course, your fist. If you want to get information out of people, it's recommended not to kill them right away. And yep. you may want to use your fist. Um, and then there's a very useful weapon, which is a combo kind of weapon. You're throwing knives. Those can be used at distance. So if you are approaching on rooftops, these are one throw, one kill, and they let you say, okay, that guy over there, he's patrolling the rooftop. I want to get onto there. I'm going to wait for the time when his back is turned. Use one of these things and get rid of him at a distance. Yeah. It also comes with a short dagger. Um, and the short dagger has its own move set, and that allows you, if you're being overwhelmed and there's a ton of guys coming at you, you can use a throwing knife, get rid of some guys in the background, and then still have some uh, ability to defend yourself, do attacks and counterattacks with your, um, your short sword. Um, and then really all of these weapons, they're centered around a, fighting, a combat system that's realistic but based on counterattacks. So what you're trying to do is um, wait for your opponents to attack, time your opening and then choose a counter attack, a counter grab, a counter dodge, basically taking advantage of that opening to get in one lethal blow. So basically a million options, so many different ways of doing things. There's, we've worked on a lot of depth in the fight and I think you can still do kind of the hack and slash, you know, press a button a bunch yeah. of times, but for people who really want to like uncover all of the moves, there's some moves, you know, for example, stabbing a guy in the knee or uh, <laughs> really awesomely in the foot. I mean, those kinds of things, you have to have the right distance from him. You have to, and you'll, you'll be surprised as you play the game because you'll end up in a situation where you try something and you'll see, some, you'll see a move that you've never seen before even halfway through the game.